Hey everyone, so for this week's assignment you worked on creating um, a template, a page layout template that uh, hopefully reasonably closely resembled your target publication. Um, and what uh, we're going to go over in lab this week is how you can then go about getting your visualizations into this in a sensible way. Um, and so hopefully you all have your text in. Um, I'm working with an example. I decided to use the Wall Street Journal. They recently redesigned the site again, um, which I, I think it looks great um, for what it's worth. Um, and so my sample is I have, uh, oops, that's not it. It is here. Okay, so I have used Bootstrap to create an approximation of this. Um, I did this by going to the Getting Started page on Bootstrap and coming down to some of their sample things. And um, I chose this, this, the basic starter template. Um, in visiting this page, uh, essentially what I did is I did a view source on it. And I copied all of this markup. And this is something that I realize uh, some of you may run into issues with, although we didn't hear about this uh, for the most part, which is that um, the way that I got all of these links, because it has this weird the dot dot structure. And this has to do with the way that, that Bootstrap is sort of protecting its code and protecting its site. But basically, I can always right click on this and say save link as. And it's going to download that file with the same file name that you see at the end there. And so in my case, I did that. And I have created two folders, one called CSS, one called JS. Um, I just went through there about three or four different um, uh, three or four different CSS and JavaScript links in here that I need to download. Of course, they're uh, loading something called jQuery, which we haven't, uh, you know, with something called jQuery. They're loading jQuery, um, uh, which we haven't used as much, but we've used a little bit. Um, and uh, some JavaScript that belongs to Bootstrap uh, that presumably they're using some fe for some features here. Um, but basically, I downloaded those files. I rewrote the links to them in my actual HTML page. So instead of being, you know, dot, dot, whatever, it's now CSS slash starter template, CSS slash bootstrap. I've also created, of course, my own style CSS, because in order to make this look more like the Wall Street Journal, I needed to define some specific styles. So I used the method that we had talked about, which was essentially sort of doing some right clicking here. So for example, now I just eyeballed the layout again, on the assumption that most places are using a 12 column layout, which is generally pretty accurate. I sort of said, okay, I think this is about one column, which means that I have 11 columns left to spread across these two. So I'm going to say this one is, this segment is eight, this segment is three, um, and uh, then I'll go ahead, oops, I don't know what happened there. Um, and then sort of went about constructing the page. So for me, the page is about the AP news values and principles, which I think are great. Um, I just took an image, I took a screen grab to uh, generate this image to stick into the right rail, which is totally fine. I obviously haven't done that yet with the social media, but uh, could do uh, as I desired or actually put social media um, sort of bugs in there. Um, and otherwise, yeah, kind of just did the right click situation. So, you know, did an inspect element and since that came up, um, you know, looked at this and said, oh, okay, font size is 30 pixels. You know, we've got different margins and line heights, you know, uh, fonts coming in here. I'm not even worrying about the font in, except to say serif is sans serif. Obviously, um, you can get more detailed. Um, if you like, and you know, so I'm getting a, a very, very basic approximation. But you know, the the object here is to um, talk about uh, what we can do in terms of getting our visualizations in here. So I'm presenting this as a sort of, I think, least um, taxing way to do it. Um, and basically, what I want you to notice, uh, or I want to emphasize here, is that I've created a new folder. Um, I've called this page sample, obviously, for you all. Um, you know, it might be you know, final page or something like that. Um, but I haven't yet pulled actually any of the files associated with my visualization into it yet. Um, so you might want to do this, you'll probably want to do it inside, uh, eventually inside of the folder for your visualization that has all of your files in it. Um, uh, but you want to kind of cut and paste things together for starters. Um, you don't have to use this file structure, you don't have to have the CSS and JS folders, um, you can. It's something that people do do a lot, um, sort of, you know, when they're when they're making things for the internet for real, um, or, you know, for when they're dealing with larger, larger sites is more what I should say. Um, 
in fairness, I never did this. So <laughs> I'm, I'm respecting the fact that people do it a lot now. Um, so anyhow, so what I want to emphasize is that, that you know, I, basically what I have here is what we hope that you all have um, essentially uh, by, you know, by Tuesday, which is, okay, I've got kind of a very rough basic layout, um, kind of got the styles and fonts and things like that in place, and I've got the text in place, right? And I just sort of pasted this in and added some P tags. Um, and you know, got my layout from it. Now, at the point that I'm ready to start adding my visualization, there's some things that I want to think about. So I am inside a div class, the column MD8, right, which is the bootstrap class here. And um, in order to, so in order to insert a visualization into the main body of the article, which is in most cases where you're going to want to put it, um, I need to do a couple of things, right? So if we recall, Anytime I want to do that, I first need to, so I'm actually going to um, just go between these p tags, okay? And I'm going to create a new div, and I'm going to give it a class of row. So the reminder here is that within Bootstrap, if you create a row within a column set, the width of that row, it the maximum width of that row is always 12 columns, right? Which is fine because I'm just going to make something that is the width of the body of my um, that is the width of the body of my text, which is going to be pretty typical for most of you, right? In most cases, the the text body of the article is going to occupy about 60% of the overall width, and you probably don't want to go too much smaller than that unless it's a really really um, sort of kind of locator style of graphic. So I'm going to add the div class row. I'm now going to say um, I'm going to add the column MD12, right? So I'm basically saying make the thing that goes in here the entire available width, okay? So I could put some content in here just to show myself that it's working, right? Which I always like to do. Um, and make sure I haven't totally broken things, okay? So now I see I've got, you know, some text in here, content, okay? So then the next thing is how do I go about getting my visualization in here? So a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to want to give this an ID. So I'm going to say, um, well, to figure out what ID that I want to use it with, what, what ID I want to give it, I'm going to actually start by bringing up my sample chart code. Um, so this is where things get a little, you know, start to kind of mix up a little bit. I'm going to open up these files. Um, okay, so I'm now working out of two different folders, so that is the, you know, the potential challenge here is sort of losing track of things. You may not want to do it exactly this way. Um, so the styles here, I don't really need to worry about because mostly it's making things look terrible as evidenced by this, right? This is the example um, the example chart that I have. So actually my styles aren't really doing me any good here. I'm going to get out of that. I have my scripts.js. So the scripts.js, I can actually go ahead and save right over to my new folder. So I'm going to say, you know what, this is great. I want a copy of this right in um, my page sample folder. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the JS. Uh, in the JS folder, okay? So the thing that I want out of this though is I need to know what is the ID that I should give to the div that I want my visualization to show up in. So if I scroll down here, I see I've called it chart div in my code here, and so in my index.html, so this is kind of my new index.html, I want to make sure to give this an ID of chart div, right? Um, that's pretty much all I need to worry about with that. Um, the Google style objects, again, I'm going to want to, to the extent that I have this, you all may have them integrated into, um, you know, into your JavaScript file or into your HTML file even. Um, I want to go ahead and make sure that I get that into, um, I'm, again, I'm going to put it in my JS file. And I'm going to do the same thing with my data. Um, sometimes folks might have, you know, you could have a separate quote unquote data folder. It's really up to you. These are just sort of um, conventions that are used. So I've saved all of these in. So now the only thing I really need to check on or the thing that I mostly want to check on is to make sure that I have included all of the things that I need um, in order to make this work properly. So 
mostly I'm just going to be looking at my head tag and making sure that I've included all of the files, both my own and the additional ones that I need from Google, so that the code that I've already written and tested and made sure works well um, will also work here. Um, so we have the bootstrap, bootstrap min, the CSS from that. We've gotten this in a slightly different uh, in a slightly different context here, but you can see I have bootstrap min.css. I have the starter template. Um, at the bottom, I know I have the bootstrap JavaScript as well as jQuery. Um, so for my own, the main things that I want to make sure I add are I want to I want to make sure I add all of my own files. I've already added my own CSS file um, previously. So here's my own CSS file right here. So here's going to be my various elements of JavaScript. Okay. Now the other thing though is that I've made a slight tweak in my file structure here because in my page sample folder, remember I put everything inside of a JS folder or all of my JavaScript inside of a JS folder. So I need to make sure to update these. Again, you're not required to do this. You can leave them all on the, on the sort of top level. It's just, oops. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to see what's going on when you have that. And other than that, I'm just going to take a look through the file down to the bottom. This is all my test data. And that's it. So with any luck, when I reload my page here, I'm actually going to be able to see that this hideous visualization in my, uh, in my template page. And there it is. So, not a good looking chart, but that's because I haven't yet made it good looking, which all of you have, which is great. Um, and that's sort of the basic thing. You can, see that my, you can see that my template is somewhat responsive. It's a little hard to demo here on this limited screen size, right? But you can see that my right rail disappears sort of typically. And this is going to resize. Now, the other thing that I would want to do in the future um, would be to think about things like, well, what happens? Uh, hopefully I have a small version of this, sorry, leaving it hanging there. Um, you know, I have a small version of this, so I can now close this out. Uh, that, you know, I might want to have an entirely separate div. You know, we remember how we did that test where we could trade off and say, well, this is visible when it's medium and large, but then this is what's visible when it's small and extra small. So I might want to have a, se a second, you know, div class in here. So as an example, Again, this is just uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, this one is not going to have the same chart uh, ID. And instead of uh, medium, I'm going to say small and uh, I actually forget what it is, but we'll see it for the small. So this should then swap. We should see that, that content swap where this is what it looks like. Now, it does do that kind of funky. Uh, loading moment uh, but you know when I'm at medium it's here and as I get down to small at some point no well, I guess it hasn't figured that out ah so this is actually going to be a bit of a challenge um, is that uh, the the Google visualizations are going to maintain their width uh, almost no matter what um, so in the next video what we're going to look at is how to um, how to actually deal with things that don't resize well. Um, so, you know, when you have a particular chart with Google visualizations, um, it has a fixed size and it's going to stay that size. The same thing happens when we need to get maps into our pages. So, um, if you're using CardoDB for something or Google Fusion tables, uh, they work with something called an iframe and they suffer from sort of the similar limitations. So, we'll start, we'll stop here. Um, and we'll come back to what happens when the page resizes um, in the next video. But hopefully you found this helpful for kind of getting your visualizations into place uh, for starters. All right, see you in a minute.